All right. Glad you could join us for our Friday night prayer and Bible study. And uh, we're going to get started tonight. And, and really looking forward to tonight, we are going to go over a character of the Bible named Jeremiah. Uh, and uh, he has such a heart of compassion. And we're going to get into just a little bit about Jeremiah and what we can learn from Jeremiah and his life. And we're thankful for his testimony. We're thankful for uh, the book that God uh, inspired him to write, and we're thankful for that. So we want to uh, go to the Lord in prayer, and I just want to ask you to pray for our nation and pray for our military. And uh, we just, uh, our men and women, we want to back the blue. Uh, we love the folks who serve and protect us, and we just are so thankful for them. And I do want you to just pray uh, in that manner. Uh, pray for the situation in Afghanistan uh, and pray for our uh, people. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, God, we do love you, Lord, and, and we thank you. Uh, God, we, we do thank you so much for, we thank you for your mercy. God, we thank you for your grace. God, we thank you for America. So thankful for a country where we have the freedom, God, to worship you without persecution. God, I pray that you'd be with these folks in Afghanistan. God, you'd watch over them. Lord, you know the need there. God, I pray you'd be with our military. Lord, we thank you for our military, the men and women who put their lives on the, on the line so that we may have the freedom that we have today. God, I pray you'd touch them, protect them. God, comfort the families who have lost loved ones during this time. God, I pray you'd touch them with your mighty hand. Lord, draw them closer to you during this time. God, I pray that you'd be with our, our country Lord, we need you. We need you in a mighty way, God. We need you. Uh, Lord, we need revival. God, we need to turn our hearts to you. God, I pray. I pray that you'd touch our country. Lord, I pray for our government. Lord, you'd be with those appointed leaders, Lord, that you would just turn their hearts to you. God, help us as Christians to pray for them. God, you tell us we need to pray. We need to turn from our wicked ways. God, we need to seek your face. God, help us to have the boldness to, to do that. How we love you. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. God, I pray that you would be with us tonight as we go over this lesson. Lord, you'd speak to our hearts through your man, the prophet Jeremiah, the compassion that he had. Lord, we thank you for his example. Oh, we love you and thank you for what you're going to do in our lives, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we're going to get started tonight. We're in uh, Jeremiah chapter number four. In Jeremiah chapter number four, so if you'd open your Bibles to Jeremiah chapter four and verse number 14, and uh, we'll begin reading in verse number 14. We'll read through verse number 19. The Old Testament prophet Jeremiah, he cared deeply, deeply for his people. He was uh, pained by their wickedness. Uh, he, he became known as the weeping prophet. 
He had a fervent love for the lost. And, and uh, although at one point in his life he wanted to quit the ministry, he kept going. He, he said that he couldn't help but preach and proclaim the word of God. He was able to do this because he was relying relying on on God's mercy and his faithfulness. I pray that you found Jeremiah chapter number 4 and we'll begin reading in verse number 14. The Bible says, O Jerusalem, was thine heart far or was thine heart from... Let me begin again. Let me start over. Jeremiah chapter 4 and verse 14, I'm sorry. O Jerusalem, wash thine heart from wickedness, that thou mayest be saved. How long shall thy vain thoughts lodge within thee? For a voice declareth from Dan, and publisheth affliction from Mount Ephraim. Make ye mention to the nations, behold, publish against Jerusalem, that watchers uh, come from a far country, and give uh, out their voice against the cities of Judah. As keepers of a field are they against her roundabout, because she hath been rebellious against me, saith the Lord. Thy way and thy doings have procured these things unto thee. This is my this is thy wickedness, because it is bitter, because it reacheth under thine heart. My bowels, my bowels I am pained at my very heart. My heart maketh a noise in me. I cannot hold my peace because thou hast heard, O oh my soul, the sound of the trumpet, the alarm of war. I want to read that last verse one more time. My bowels, my bowels, I am pained at my very heart. My heart maketh a noise in me. I cannot hold my peace because thou hast heard, O oh my soul, the sound of the trumpet, the alarm of war. Uh, Jeremiah has learned a lesson that caring comes with a cost. In Jeremiah, we see a faithful man of God who was willing to bear uh, the burden of caring for a people who really didn't even care at all. Uh, he, he carried this burden and, and his example, man, his example should inspire us and instruct us in being a type of Christian that God wants us to be and the type of Christian that the world needs to see. Uh, people who truly care in our hearts and in our actions. Now in Jeremiah, we have this, he has this heart uh, of compassion and as we uh, uh, learn about this, we, we go back to a fellow named David. King David was one, uh, uh, at one point in David's life, he felt that absolutely no one cared uh, what he was going through. In, in, in Psalm 142 and verse 4, uh, the Bible says, I looked on my right hand and beheld, but there was no man that would know me. Refuge failed me. No man cared for my soul. I'm going to say maybe there's a time in your life uh, uh, when you have felt the same way. Uh, you remember, uh, though, how precious it was when uh, that person with that compassionate heart came and reached out that hand and lifted you up and cared for you. People who truly care can make a difference. We can be difference makers. Now we're going to look at the life here, a little bit of the life of Jeremiah and learn from a man who is not afraid or ashamed to care about others. Number one, love for the lost. Of all the prophets uh, of God, there is no doubt that Jeremiah was one who had great compassion uh, for his people, for his nation. We look at this man known as the weeping prophet and he was greatly affected by the backsliding and sin that surrounded him. Uh, we, we are so desensitized, I believe, by uh, what's going on in Hollywood and on the TV that uh, they have, everything has become a norm. 
That's what they want. They want all the commercials uh, to you see things. And as you see them, at first, it, 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 it's appalling. And at first, you're, you're kind of aggravated about it. And then it becomes where you just kind of see it and, and you let it slide. And then it's, uh, well, it's okay. And then, and then you end up defending it. And, and, and it's awful. From alcohol to tobacco to uh, uh, homosexuality, we, we see it and it surrounds us through the uh, fornication and the wickedness and the adultery that goes on uh, through the TV. And, you, and we, we, we put that in our minds we put that in our minds and it desensitizes us to what's going on to the sin that's in the world. Well, Jeremiah, uh, he, wasn't unlike, he wasn't like that. He, he didn't let himself become calloused, and, but he cared enough to cry and he cared enough to do something to resolve the needs uh, with what he faced. He cared enough. He wanted to do something about it. Now we find he, it, it affected his heart. In Jeremiah chapter 4 and verse 18 and 19, I want you to look in those verses with me. Thy way and thy doings have procured these things unto thee. This is thy wickedness because it, it is bitter, because it reacheth unto thine heart. My bowels, my bowels, I am pained at my very heart. My heart maketh a noise in me. I cannot hold my peace because thou hast heard, O oh my soul, the sound of the trumpet, the alarm of war. God's word teaches us that our eyes affect our hearts. What we see and consider affects how we feel. It was so with the Lord Jesus Christ. In Matthew chapter 9 and verse 36, But when he, Christ, saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 22 and verse 23 says, The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. Jeremiah states, in these verses in chapter 4 and verse 18 and 19 that he was pained and that he was literally hearing the cry of his heart regarding his nation. When God speaks to our hearts, we need to uh, not only hear it, but we need to respond. We need to strain to hear the word of God, hear him speaking to our heart, but we also need to respond to that. The Bible tells us in James that we don't need to be hearers only, but doers of the word of, the word of God. We need to do the work. We need to ask ourselves, I ask myself, when was the last time my heart was broken so badly over someone's sin that we shed a tear? It affected his heart. It also affected his actions. In Jeremiah chapter 20 and verse number 9, Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing and I could not stay. Because God spoke to the heart of Jeremiah, he had to respond. When, when, when God speaks to our heart, it, it should inspire us to action. It should inspire us to, to witness, to uh, live a life for him. Jeremiah was so overcome with the message of the word of God that he literally could not withhold himself from delivering it. Uh, even though out of discouragement, he had vowed to leave the ministry. Peter and John told the hostile authorities, for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. And Paul told the Corinthians, necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. We too, we need to let God's word work in our hearts and it needs to work in us and through us. If God's word permeates our lives as it should, uh, there will be an inevitable flow, overflow that will affect all of those around us. 
I remember a story that uh, D.L. Moody walking down the street. I'm not sure where he was at. I, I, I would say that it was Wall Street, but I'm not sure uh, the story. But he was so overcome with the Holy Spirit uh, uh, that he had to leave the street and, and go into a home, a friend's home, by himself and pray. Uh, he was so overwhelmed with the Holy Spirit. We see... Jeremiah's loyalty to the Lord despite the fact uh, then and now it's not popular it's not a popular position to uh, uh, be faithful to God to be loyal to him to take his word and apply it to our lives and try to live by it try to live a holy pure life it's not a position of the majority it's not a popular position, but Jeremiah realized the importance of being loyal to the Lord. He was loyal in his declarations in Jeremiah chapter 42 and verse number 4. Then Jeremiah the prophet said unto them, I have heard you. Behold, I will pray unto the Lord your God according to your words. And it shall come to pass that whatsoever thing the Lord shall answer you, I will declare it unto you. I will keep nothing back from you. See, Jeremiah made it very clear uh, that he desired to speak only the word of God. Only that he want to speak that. And uh, I want to say Micaiah, uh, he said something very similar in uh, 1 Kings chapter 22 and verse 14. As the Lord liveth, what the Lord saith unto me, that will I speak. I don't care uh, uh, who you're speaking to, uh, who you're giving advice to. It needs to be godly advice. It, it doesn't matter if we're giving parent, uh, 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 advice to our children, uh, advice to students, advice to friends, advice to family. Uh, it needs to be godly advice. It doesn't need to be just our personal opinions. I let my mouth run off too much about my personal opinion but I need to have godly advice and biblical advice to folks who need it in Acts chapter 20 and verse 27 uh, the Bible uh, the apostle Paul says for I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 12 and 13 now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth but which the Holy Ghost teacheth comparing spiritual things with spiritual Revelation chapter uh, Revelation chapter 22 and verse 18 and 19 says for I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. But we also see he was loyal in his tribulations. In Jeremiah chapter 38 in verse number six, then took they Jeremiah and cast him into the dungeon and Malchiah, the son of Hamalak, that was in the court of the prison. And they let down Jeremiah with cords. And in the dungeon, there was no water but mire. So Jeremiah sunk in the mire. Jeremiah was faithful to the Lord, even when in prison and sinking in the mire of the dungeon. He understood what the hymn writer Thomas Chisholm uh, uh, meant when he penned, Great is thy faithfulness. All I have needed thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Jeremiah is a beautiful illustration of one who found out that Christ's strength was, is sufficient in the most miserable of situations. Number three, the light of his life. Throughout the Bible, we can see themes that are evident in uh, Bible characters. Uh, we see John the Baptist, his theme seems to be the coming Messiah. 
And uh, for the Apostle Paul, it appears as the gospel of the risen Savior. And Jeremiah, his constant theme is the mercy and faithfulness of God. We'll look at the mercy in Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 21 and verse 22. This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, but his compassions fail not. See, Jeremiah talked about the mercies of God, but he did uh, more than simply talk about God's mercies. He himself was merciful to people. While it would have been easy to give up, and probably uh, a lot of people would have just brushed their hands off and walked away uh, uh, from these people, uh, Jeremiah didn't. Jeremiah prayed, Jeremiah wept, Jeremiah encouraged his countrymen to come back to God. Too many of us have just brushed our hands off uh, uh, to the sin of this world instead of begging them to come back to God. We see the mercy, but we also see the faithfulness. Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 23, they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Jeremiah was faithful. He was faithful in times of hardship, in times of deprivation, in times of imprisonment. He was dependent upon God's faithfulness and he ever modeled faithfulness in his own life. Even sank, sunken in the mire. Jeremiah was a phenomenal example of a man whose heartbeat was in rhythm with God's heartbeat. God spoke to Jeremiah and he received the word of God with personal passion and fervor. And deep in the heart of Jeremiah, God instilled a great love for the lost souls of Israel. I can tell you we need to ask God to break our hearts for the lost souls of our country, for the lost souls of our communities, for the lost souls of, the, of our family members and our friends. We need to ask God to break our hearts that we may have compassion uh, for the lost. We need to have that burning desire to live our life in such a way that the glory of God is clearly shown uh, to those around us. If not, if we don't, we need to search our heart in the presence of God until we discover and correct this problem. We need God. We need to have compassion on the lost. We need to go by Jeremiah's example. We don't need to care about what's popular. We just need to care about the lost souls that are around us that are perishing. He had a love for the lost. Uh, he was loyal to the Lord and he was, uh, God was the light of his life. Let us pray that we can have a heart as Jeremiah. Heavenly Father, God, we love you and we thank you for Jeremiah. We thank you for this book that you have given us, God. We see his faithfulness to you. Even in hard times of times he, he wanted to quit, he couldn't help but proclaim your word. God, help us to be there. Help us to be that, that kind of Christian, uh, Lord, where we just can't quit and we just can't uh, help but proclaim your goodness. And God, you are good to us. God, if all you ever did was just save our souls, that was more than we ever deserved. God, I pray for the one who hears this. Lord, if they don't know you as their personal Savior, God, they would come to know you. They would recognize their sin. They would recognize that they can't pay for it. They would recognize, God, your mercy and grace, that that free gift is the gift of salvation, just trusting and calling upon your name. Lord, we love you and we thank you for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen.